and welcome to the Susie Hopesteader channel and today we're doing part three of how to cook on a wood stove of my five part series on wood stoves and whether you're cooking on a wood stove without burners the, the type you'd have in your house or you're cooking on a actual uh, burner style wood stove with the uh, burner pieces on the top of it or it's a portable wood stove that you've hooked up into a wall tent um, they're all all the same but cook a lot differently than your conventional oven uh, range. Uh, and then of course if you have a power outage um, and it's absolutely an absolute necessity that you cook on your wood stove, uh, then it's pretty important. Uh, but if you're just doing it to kind of experiment uh, with different ways of cooking and different uh, ingredients and different style uh, materials, uh, then hopefully this will answer a couple questions for you. Uh, so you can cook on top of a wood stove or you can cook actually inside your wood stove. Um, now the trick on cooking inside the wood stove is obviously that it's not as hot. Uh, but when you're cooking on the top, you definitely want it hotter. Um, you can use a trivet underneath your materials um, or you know you can have two or three trivets uh, if you don't have the burners that are already on there that are usually removable. Um, if you leave it on the trivet, uh, it's just keeping a lot of the particular things that you might be cooking in there from burning. So depending on what you're cooking in there, uh, if you don't want, if you think it's something that's going to get scorched on the bottom, then you might want to put it on a trivet and keep it a little bit off the heat. Um, if it's something where you really want it to get hot and maybe your fire is not so hot, then you can put it directly on there. Or you can even take off the burners if you have that style cooktop and set it in there a little bit deeper just so it gets a little hotter. Um, so a lot of it really depends on what you're cooking and then what you're cooking in. Now, this Dutch oven is probably one of the most important things that you're going to want to have when you're using your wood stove, and that's cast iron. And then there's a couple other cast iron pieces that are kind of important to have, and um, you want something more like a griddle style uh, piece or something even bigger than this, um, more, you know, for like pancakes or larger um, things that you have to cook like eggs. And then the other kind of key cast iron piece you want to have is going to be just a skillet, a good old skillet. Um, and now you can tell some of these are need to be cleaned and seasoned. Uh, so I'll have a, another video for you on how to clean and season, which basically just means oil, a uh, cast your cast iron ware, and then also how to store it because that has a lot to do with what it's going to look like the next time you use it. So there's a couple of really important pieces you want to have for your uh, cast iron. And then small little pieces like this, uh, like a little cauldron with maybe even some feet on it, uh, are kind of nice to have just for doing some small things like butter. Um, you know, because you don't want to cook one little stick of butter in something this huge. Uh, and then of course they make some really fun little pieces, um, like this is for cornbread or some really small vegetables or something else that um, you might want to add to your, to your recipes, but there's all kinds of fun cast iron ware um, that you can buy. And um, a couple other things that you might want to have is some, uh, like a steel pot, because this is going to cook a little differently as well um, with a lid. And you know, you can kind of tell the differences in thickness. So obviously cast iron being your thickest kind of a material. And then a steel. Uh, is the second thickest material that you can use. And then there's also an enamelware. Um, and that's another thing you'll see a lot of people cooking with, especially out in barbecue pits uh, or on tripods or something like that. So, and this is the thinnest uh, of the three, as you can see in metal. So a couple of things that you're gonna experiment with is what foods go best in what containers. Um, coffee, like I said, um, you know, which is kind of important, especially when your power goes out, um, you know, you're going to want to use something like a percolator style uh, coffee pot, which is super easy to use um, and just nice to have on hand. So there's a percolator style because that just kind of gives you an idea what it's done. 
So something else you want to um, have too on hand as well as all your pots and pans is some of the oils that you're going to need uh, to season your pots and pans. Uh, again, I'll talk about this a little bit more in our other video where we'll talk about just how to um, take care of your cast ironware. Uh, but you do want to have either a shortening, which some people swear by, uh, to use kind of like a Crisco shortening to oil your pans and clean your pa uh, cast ironware. Or you might want to do something kind of in between where it's just a uh, coconut oil, which is, you know, not a real thin oil, but it's thinner than a Crisco, you know, shortening. Or you might want to do something like an olive oil, uh, which is the thinnest of all of them. So, um... Like I said, everybody kind of has their preferences, and some of it does depend on how dirty or clean or new your cast ironware is, too. And we'll talk about that in another video. Uh, but one of the best things that you can cook in your uh, cast iron is going to be bacon. And just because that bacon is the perfect way to uh, season either new cast iron or keep your old cast ironware seasoned after you're done cooking. Because you'd actually want to leave a little bit of that bacon grease in there. So, um, lots of things that go with cast ironware. And then, of course, you're just going to need some kind of a mitt or some little lifting uh, tool so that you don't get burned. On your uh, cast iron, you know, sometimes you don't want to do things that have a lot of liquid. Um, I know it's, there's a real urge to cook beans in a pot on a wood stove, um, but if that has a lot of liquids in it or kind of a lot of syrupy um, ingredients to it, that can uh, sometimes pull out some of the oils uh, in your seasoning that you have in your pot and create a little bit of a residue in your food. So, you know, if you're not that opposed to it, it's not a big deal, but you may see some kind of a residue uh, if you do a lot of liquids in a uh, cast iron piece. Um, so sometimes like drier things like dumplings or chicken and dumplings or things that can absorb the liquids are better to use in a cast iron piece, whereas um, a stainless steel uh, pot or enamelware, you probably wouldn't see that residue. So a couple things to think about. Uh, popcorn's a fun one to do in a wood stove, in a Dutch oven, uh, plus, you know, some little small cauldron like that is great for your butter. Um, obviously eggs and pancakes and that kind of stuff are great for, for your griddles, uh, you know, and steaks and meats and some of the, the heavier uh, material or uh, foods that you're going to cook are great for skillets. So you have to kind of experiment a little bit. Uh, it really does depend on what you're cooking and what your recipes are. Um, I'll also have some great wood stove cookbooks for you on my shopping link and I'll also have a materials list for you or a supply list on my website Susie Homesteader of the Rockies. So hopefully as I said you've seen my other videos on uh, wood stoves and one of those that you might want to watch is the one just about how to start your fire and keep your uh, wood stove fire going. So uh, a lot of the trick with wood stove cooking is dependent on how hot your fire is um, and then like I said having a thermometer for your wood stove uh, if you take something like that off of the pipe and set it directly on the stove you'll get a more accurate reading. Uh, which I think I might have mentioned is kind of the equivalent of a medium to high uh, setting on a regular wood st or regular conventional stove, uh, whereas it would be on one of the highest uh, temperatures on your wood stove. So you know, lots of different things to kind of take into consideration when you're cooking, but most of it is just throwing some stuff on there and seeing how it cooks. So. Um, Hopefully you don't have too many questions, but if you do, come and see me on my website, Susie Homesteader of the Rockies, and uh, as I said, we'll talk about a little bit more about other things to, um, to go with your cast ironware. So we'll see you there. Bye-bye. So, let's get started. Subscribe to the Susie Homesteader channel, and we'll see you there. Bye-bye.